we're showing a graph here, which I've copied down here, and we can see that we have a circle C1, which has equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 100. And then we have the smaller circle, C2, which has equation x minus 15 of squared plus y squared is equal to 40. We're told that the circles meet at points A and B, and we can see that's here. So they meet there and they meet here. And we're asked to show that the angle AOB is equal to 0 0.635 radians. And we're asked to give this to three significant figures. And we're told that O is the origin. So just looking at our diagram in a bit more detail, we'll just zoom in here to this diagram. And we want to find the angle AOB. So we know that this means we're going to have a triangle between A, between O, and between B. And we know that we want to find this angle in here. So just zooming out again, we know that we want to find theta is what we want to find. So the first step to be able to do this is to work out the points A and the points B. So how are we going to do this? Well, we can take one of our equations and substitute them into our other one. So we can rearrange this first equation to have that y squared is equal to 100 minus x squared. And then what we're going to do, we will substitute this into C2. So we'll just write down, substitute this into C2. So then just writing this down, we'll have that x minus 15 all squared. Then we have plus y squared. So we now are going to substitute this in, which is 100 minus x squared. So plus 100 minus x squared and we say that, that is going to be equal to 40. So the next step here is to going to be to expand these brackets. So we'll have x squared, then we'll have minus 15x minus 15x, which is minus 30x. Then we'll add on negative 15 times negative 15, which is going to be 225. Then we add 100, we subtract x squared, and that is going to be equal to still 40. So in tidying this up, this is going to leave us with the fact that negative 30x is going to be equal to 40. And we subtract 225 and then subtract 100. So that is going to leave us with negative 285. And then we can just times both sides by minus 1, which gives us that 30x is equal to 285. So we can just take our negative signs out there. And that's going to be the fact that x is equal to 285 divided by 30. And then putting this into a calculator, this is equal to 19 divided by 2. Or in decimals, we can have that that is equal to 9.5. So then what we can do, we can use this C1 equation to then work out what y is. Then we have that y squared is going to be equal to 100 minus 9.5. We square that, which is going to be equal to, so that's y squared, and it's going to be equal to 39 over 4. And then we want to work out what the y coordinate is, so we'll have to take the square root of this. So therefore, we'll have that y is going to be plus or minus the square root of 39 divided by the square root of 4, which is 2. So therefore, we can see we have one x coordinate, and this makes sense because the x value and these are the same. And then we're going to have one positive on the y-axis and one negative on the y-axis. So therefore, what we can say is that the point A is going to have coordinates 9.5. And then just so we have this, we can actually say that y is also equal to plus or minus, we put root 39 over 2 into our calculator, which is equal to 3.12. So then we say that point A is going to be the one that's above the x-axis, so it's going to be positive, so 3.12. Then on the other hand, we have the point B, which is going to be equal to 9.5, it's going to be the negative y value, which is going to be negative 3.12. So therefore, we've calculated these coordinates. So we need to have a think, what do we have just now? So we have a triangle, which is as follows. So we have, this is our angle theta in here, and we know that this is split across the origin here. And then we have that this here is going to be the radius. And we know of C1, that is going to be equal to the square root of 100, which is 10. And then we know, well, what is this going to be here? This is going to be the point from... If we look at it on our diagram, maybe that'll help to see better. That's going to be a point from the origin to the kind of x value. So the x 
value that the a and b point take, so it is going to be 9.5. So therefore, so from this, we know that we can then write out a right angle triangle, which is as follows. So we have a right angle here. If we let this be the angle alpha, then we know that this is 10 and this is 9.5. So therefore, we can effectively say that we can work out alpha we can do this using trigonometry and then we know that alpha is going to be half of what theta is so if we say we'll let alpha be equal to theta divided by 2 then we can solve for alpha we know that alpha we have the cos alpha is going to be equal to well we know for saw katoa it's going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse so we're going to have that this is the adjacent, that is the opposite, and this is the hypotenuse. So we're going to have 9.5 divided by 10. So therefore, we can take the inverse, and we have the alpha is going to be equal to cos negative 1, 9.5 over 10. And we put this into our calculator. Remember to have our calculator in radians. And this comes out as 0 0.31756. And then from this, what can we do? Well, we can then say, so therefore, we can now work out what theta is going to be. Theta is going to be equal to 2 lots of alpha, which is equal to 2 multiplied by 0 0.31756. So that we then put this into our calculator, and this is going to be equal to 0 0.63512. In the question, we recall that we're asked to do this the three significant figures. So therefore, we can say, we'll just write a little concluding statement, because in the question, they refer to it as the angle AOB. So we'll do the same. So we'll put, therefore, the angle AOB is equal to, now we'll round the value to three significant figures, which is 0 0.635. And we'll write as required, as this is what the question asked for. So as required. So this question has now been completed. It was worth four marks and we received our first mark for working out the x coordinate value just here. We then received our second mark for getting the y coordinate. We then received our third mark for doing our trigonometry, knowing to use these triangles and for getting the fact that alpha was going to be equal to 0 0.31756. And we then receive our final mark for doubling this and concluding with the required answer which the question asked for. So now we can see that the region which is shown in this graph here by the faded bits, it is bounded by C1 and C2. And we are asked to find the perimeter of the shaded region and we're asked to give our answers to one decimal place. So what is the perimeter? So we effectively know that the perimeter is going to be right around the edge of our shape. So normally we can work out the perimeter or the circumference of a circle, but this time we can see that we have two circles, but they're not full circles because we have the bits where they join up. So I'll just highlight in yellow what our perimeter is. So we'll come all the way around here, and then we'll get to this point, add on that part there, and then there we go. So that's our perimeter there. So we need to have a think. Normally we'd just work out the circumferences of the circles, but we know that we must take out the bits where the dotted line are. So we know that this part of the perimeter for that circle and this part of the perimeter for that circle. So we must think, what does this depend on? So it depends on this angle theta and we're gonna use the angle theta which we worked out here and then we're gonna work out an angle in this triangle here, which is gonna help us to be able to calculate the perimeter. So I'll just draw right angle triangles in again. So we have one here, and then let's say that's our center here. We're also going to have one a bit like that. So first of all, we're going to have a look at C1. So for C1, we know that the angle theta, so we'll just label this as theta here, and then we have denoted the angle in here as beta. So we'll just annotate that a little bit better just to make sure we can all understand it. So that is beta and that is theta. So for C1, we know that theta is going to be equal to 0 0.635 radians. How do we know this? So we know this from part A of this question. 
so then how does this affect us so we also know so we know that we know that and we also know that the radius is going to be 10. so therefore we can say that the perimeter of c1 and let's denote this as p1 so therefore we'll have that p1 so the perimeter of c1 is going to be the radius 10 and we're going to multiply that by full number radians in a circle so we have 2 pi and then we're going to subtract this angle theta so 0 0.635 then we put this into our calculator and this is equal to 56.48 so that's the perimeter from here all the way around to here so what we've effectively done is we have taken the angle so this part here out by subtracting it from 2 pi and why is this we know that the Circum circumference or perimeter formula is going to be 2 pi r. So therefore, for C2, we need to do a little bit more work. So for C2, how are we going to do this? So we have this triangle in here, so I'll just copy it out a bit bigger here just to make life a little bit easier for us. So we have our angle beta in here, and then we can also split it into two, just like we did in the previous part of the question, and we have a right angle here, and we can say that we'll then have a sub-triangle, and this time we know, in the same way as the previous question, that this part here is going to be root 40, because that is the radius of C2, and then this dotted line here, so the dotted line, how are we going to find it? So we know that the center of this circle is going to be the point x equals 15, that's because the equation is x minus 15 all squared plus y squared is equal to 40. So therefore, we know that to go from here to this point here, we already figured that out in the previous part. That was going to be equal to 9.5 because of the coordinates of a. And we know all the way to here is 15. So that leaves this distance here to be 5.5. So we have 5.5 in there. So that's 5.5. How did we get that? That is going to be 15 minus 9.5. And what are those values? So that is the center of C2 and 9.5. What is that? 9.5 is the x coordinate of A and B. So then what does this mean? So this means we can do exactly the same as we did in the previous question, but we're just going to skip out a step. And rather than multiplying everything by 2 and kind of organizing a new angle, we can just simply say this time that beta is going to be equal to 2. So we multiply it by 2 because the calculation we're about to do is just going to find the angle from here to here so therefore we multiply by 2 so it's going to be 2 multiplied by cos negative 1 and we're going to have 5.5 and we divide that by the square root of 40. We put all this into our calculator and therefore we have that beta is going to be 1.03 radians so now in the same way as we found the perimeter c1 we'll say that the perimeter of c2 let's denote it by p2 how are we going to work it out so we're going to do the same way we're going to have the radius which is root 40 and we're going to multiply it by 2 pi but this time subtract 1.03 put our brackets in there we then put this into our calculator and this is equal to 33.22 so then we can say that the total perimeter is going to be equal to P1 plus P2. And we have that that is 56.48. And then we're going to add 33.22 to that. So we add these together. And we can therefore say that the total perimeter is going to be equal to 89.7. And we've therefore completed this question. It was worth four marks and we achieved our first mark for working out the perimeter of C1. So that was when we said 56.48. We then received our second mark for working out this angle beta and saying that it was equal to 1.03 radians. Then likewise for C2, we received our third mark for then calculating that it was equal to 33.2. We then receive our fourth and final mark for concluding with the correct answer, which to one decimal place was 89.7.